everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition for Astronomy for Beginners and today I'm going to show you how to take star trail images through a basic DSLR setup like this. Now, star trailing is a process of you take a series of images of the night sky you can either take a long exposure to get star trailing or you can take separate exposures and basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to capture the stars so that the trail because this mount or this tripod is not uh, got mo no motor drives it's just a basic altars mount it goes up and down left and right and basically with this setup an EQ mount will track the stars. A mount like this won't track the stars. So basically what you'll get is a field rotation in the night sky. So when you're taking series of exposures, you will get the star trailing. For some people, it is bad to have star trailing in the images, but you can actually get some amazing pictures through star trailing. Particularly if you want to focus on a landscape or, or iconic sort of structure or in the la uh, on the landscape or a nice scenery or even just in your back garden. You can set it up and you can take these star trails. And this is what exactly what I've done. It is, a, it is actually the first time I've actually done star trailing and last night was absolutely amazing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look at my image that I've taken last night. So what do you reckon to my image then? Are you quite impressed what you see? Believe it or not, you too can take a great picture like this for yourself using a basic setup like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look on the camera itself, what equipment you're going to need, and I'm also going to show you a series of uh, methods to set the camera right, and also I'm going to show you some of the software that I use to get this stunning image. And you too can actually get this image for yourself and have awesome pictures. And using a basic setup like a DSLR camera and a basic camera tripod or, or a tri telescope tripod, as long as you can find some ways to mount it, you can take long exposure images of the night sky. On this one, I mount it onto a decent telescope tripod because it's a lot more sturdier. And a good example with this uh, AZ3 mount is that. This is quite heavy duty and that's what you want. One way you can fit it is you can buy a dovetail plate which will fit into a quarter of an inch thread bolt on there. You can buy these from Tring Astronomy or you can buy them from Telescope Service or any other good astronomy retailer. And again all it is is a Vixen dovetail and it fits over the, uh, the dovetail mounting bracket like so. Another accessory you're going to need is very important and for you to take long exposures of these uh, star trails you're going to need to invest in a bulb or shutter switch. These cost around, around about 5 to 10 pounds at the most. You only need a basic one, the one that has a clipping switch okay so enables what it does is it will, if you connect it to the camera, like so, on the side, it clips in, and what you can do is you can take pictures remotely using this uh, basic switch, and what that does is, it will enable you to do continuous shots, or you can take single shots, without touching the camera. If you touch the, uh, the actual shutter itself, and you happen to move it, 
you will ruin the images straight away. So you need to get into something like this before you can do star trading. I'm now going to show you closer how to uh, set the camera up to take star trailing. So, here is my Canon. This is an, the EOS 600D. This is a very good beginner's entry level DSLR camera. It doesn't matter what camera you use, you can use any DSLR as long as you can set the camera to take longer exposures is uh, providing you've got the standard issue lens you should get with your camera this is basically a normal uh, stock lens which is 18mm to 55mm lens actually on the lens system itself there is an, um, an autofocus and manual focus now when you're taking your shots you need to set the camera so it's focused actually on the star field and to do that you need to set the lens system to manual focus like so so you set it to manual focus and then on this part here you rotate the uh, actual lens system and basically what you're trying to do is indicating onto the marker I've set mine into infinity some lenses will be, you have to adjust it all the way out and then back in slightly. But basically, as long as you are lined up onto that mark, like so, you are set to infinity. For some strange reason on this camera itself, I try to get it focused and it doesn't seem to work for me. Because when I take my shot, my star images are blurred. So the technique that I do is basically I set it as if I'm taking just a normal shot. Basically I set it to the landscape shot like so. And what I do is I set mine to autofocus first. So I switch it back to autofocus. I focus on a distant target, say like the moon or something bright. And what I do is, is I hold down the shutter like so and let it go through its motion so basically if I take my shot you know, it will focus the image first and it will probably take the shot once that's focused the image you then flick it back to manual mode because if you don't and you take a shot it will try and autofocus the star field and it just won't. So some camera lenses are a bit, they work differently. I'm not guaranteed that they're all the same. It's just that some camera lenses just don't tend to focus very well. I'm basically using a Canon EFS standard lens system. So basically to get my autofocus, I autofocus on a fixed distant target, say like the moon, and an object, once I focus, I flick back, that is my, my setting. Once you've set your camera to manual mode, first off you want to do is you want to dim down the display because it can be quite bright. So you press on menu, depending on your camera. So you press on menu and you scroll across to LCD brightness. You then set it and then scroll down to the lowest setting. You press set. Now the reason why you set it your, your LCD screen because it can be quite bright and it can might and it might interfere with your images. Plus it'll ruin your night vision, so try and minimize some of the light pollution. So I've set it so you can see the settings. So you, so you can see what I'm doing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set the ISO and to do that we go on to ISO button you press the ISO button or you may need to go to your menu to set your ISO depending on your camera so we go to the ISO button and we basically switch to 1600 
you may want to switch it to uh, 3200 but I found that 1600 is a good uh, aperture exposure so and also if you increase your ISO you increase the noise in the images so your images will be less sharp they'll be noisy they'll be pixelated so set it to 1600 which is a good setting then we set our exposure times so using this uh, lever at the top we flip down we're going into seconds now and you want to go between 20 to 30 seconds exposures you may want to go longer now if you've got the bulb sitting on your camera uh, what you can do with this uh, function is you can take as long exposure in your images with bulb setting you can take it from 30 to even an hour's exposure time but it's not recommended because if you've got uh, cloud if you've got cloudy skies or you've got whispers of clouds or you've got a lot of interference in the background with a lot of light pollution just that one shot can be ruined this is the reason why i like to do series of such shots because if you get a bad shot you can edit it and get rid of some of the, the bad shots but again with both setting you've got to have dark skies and if you're taking the exposure of that setting is you can't have ISO uh, 600 so and the reason why is if you put it at 1600 and you take a really long exposure of 10 20 minutes you're going to white out or wash out your image so if you are going to do that setting you need to go and set it to the lowest ISO setting and then you can take your shot but again it's not an ideal way to take star trails the best way to do this is to set your your camera between 25 to 30 seconds and set your ISO to 1600 what we're doing is we're going to take a series of shots so that's our set up we also need to check that our camera is taking multiples of images so we need to click on to our drive mode and we need to select continuous shooting it's very important that you have that so basically when you set your shutter on your release cable okay you can hold that release cable lock it in place and it will take continuous shots all the way through so you need to have that set. Once that's set and you're focused, I'll now proceed to the next step. So we've got the camera set up. We've got our settings. That's all you need to do. Now, alternatively, is once you're focused, you can switch off the, the live view. Okay, you can switch it off. If you leave it on, you get noise in your images. So always switch off your your live view. Take a few shots first to see if you're focused on the stars, and then you can switch off the live view so you don't get no noise in the images. Then what you do is ideally if you want to get the star trails right in the center you need to find where north is and to do that you need to use a compass or you can use a mobile phone app called GPS status which is an Android app and basically what you do is you get your tripod mounted so it's pointing north once it's pointing north you then locate where the plow is find where Polaris is all right and just basically point it to that exact latitude to where Polaris is going to be okay make sure you lock down all your screws and then once you're in view you don't need to be exactly you can do a rough sort of guesstimate 
that's all you need to do. Because of the lens being quite wide, you can always crop the image for your images to get it central. But again, you just, just need to point it, get the mouse set up to north, pointing ideally towards Polaris. Then, all you've got to do is get your camera on the shutter, you can take the picture, you can take a shot. So you're taking your shot and keep away from it. And there you go, it's taking a shot. Once you're happy you've got a nice sharp image and you've got the pinpoint stars. So what you'll do is then, is you'll take roundabout, depending on your night sky or depending on what time you've got left that's clear, take as many shots as possible. So take loads of shots, as much as you can. Ideally take at least 30 minutes or 30 seconds exposures or more. So if you take an hour or 80 minutes or whatever, depending on whatever, just take as, as many shots as possible. Also, be careful when you're taking long exposures is because the, the lens hasn't got a dew shield, you can't fit a dew shield because of the wide angle or you get a vignette effect. So time after time, you need to go and dry out the lens because you either freeze up or dew up. Because if you don't do that periodically for about 10 to 15 minutes, it will ruin your shot and it will ruin the images. So just keep going in and out, checking on the camera. You know, once your camera's set to continuous frames, you can just take the shots and all that. It, once you've finished your shot, then you can either use a, a cloth to try and wipe off the dew. But personally, I don't like that. Because if you're wiping off the camera lens, what that will do is not only will it uh, smudge your optics, it will also might move your camera setup, which you don't want. So, top tip, you can either borrow your, uh, your wife's or your partner's hairdryer. And basically what you could do is use the air dryer or get something like this which is a purpose for dew and this is called a dew buster you can get these from a lot of good astronomy retailers and they'll sell them for about around about 15 to 20 pounds this is a DC format so you can plug it onto a power tank or a battery or even your car what this dew buster will do is will help you to clear the lens without touching the camera body or the tripod. So basically, you once you uh, keep going up and down, you're, you're basically waiting to get rid of the dew or the frosting. Once that's done and clear, you can just go back and just take the shot. And what you do is you can take loads of these pictures and keep going half an hour to an hour to even two hours if you wish and just keep taking as much as you can also uh, when you are taking long exposures it is a good idea that you take dark frames and the reason why you take dark frames is the software that I'm going to show you is <clears throat> the software that I'm going to show you to take dark frames will help to reduce the noises in the images and to do that all you do is clip on the dust cap clip on the dust cap and basically what you're going to do is you're going to take dark frames and it doesn't matter how many dark frames you want to take you can take between 30 or 40 dark frames depending on how much you got but my last the, the image that I got I managed to take just 15 dark frames and it was enough. So take some dark frames and what that does will help to improve your images. So once you're happy you've got as, as much data or much 
uh, uh, pictures you've got. All you do now is, once you're happy, bring it back inside and that's it. So now what we're going to do, we're going to transfer the data of all the images we've collected and I'm going to show you a, a special program that you can use and you can produce these stunning images. So we're on my computer. Here is my awesome image of the star trailing. This is basically my back garden. And as you can see, I've got the central part of where Polaris is going to be. And you can see this nice, perfect circle. Basically, this is the Earth's rotation. This is what's giving that effect. So to show you how to do this image and do it for yourself and get some stunning shots, you need to go online and visit this website. This is www.startrails.de and I find this to be the most easiest star trailing program available. It's free to download. You just visit that website. Once you've downloaded it, and you installed it, you then need to start trails itself. So this is the program. It's very basic and all you gotta do is if you select file and you open images, you then go and find where your star trails are. So we go into our star trails and these are our captures. I've only captured a few amount of frames, all the frames I've had to do because of uh, the lens system started to frost up. But do not worry about that. What this program will, will enable you to do is if you've got gaps in your images, this program will help to patch up the gaps and give you the star trailing effect. I have all my images and you can check each one individually so you can find out if they're good images or not. As you can see here, very nice razor sharp image there nice and crisp which shows that uh, my lens system is well focused you may get a bit of cloud from time to time so just be aware is pick out the best images you can find and if you've got any clouds or any satellite uh, where they've crossed the, the path of the of the image try and delete some of those once you've got the best possible images, you then, if you collected dark frames, which dark frames do help, you go onto there and you pick out your dark frames. What these dark frames will do when you stack the images together, you're able to reduce some of the noises in the images. And then all it is. A good thing about this, you click on the Star Trails button and it gives you a, another option. And basically, it gives you a series of uh, you can either lighten the, the sky, and obviously, you can have a, a much lighter background. But I prefer to just use it on the default setting. And what you're going to do is you click on OK. And the program will stack each of the individual images. It will then compensate for any gaps in the images. Obviously, if there's clouds that's got in the way. And it will stack some of the dark frames in the image itself. So this may take some time to process, depending on how many pictures you've taken and how quick your computer is. This may take probably five to about 10 minutes. And what it does is, as you can see here, you can see uh, stars to get elongated. So let it do its uh, 
processing. And as you see, there's a stasis table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the video and I'll come back to see if it's done. So now, so now that's completed my image. And as you can see, it's stacked 46 frames of 30 seconds and it's given me that effect. Quite a stunning picture, as you can see here. But as you can see here, I've got a very nice image there. Even though it's only 46 frames, ideally, if you want the stars to be more of a trail, you need to get more uh, frames. So more frames, the better. And when you get more of these frames, you get more of the spiraling effect. And then you see there, it's a, it's a beautiful image. And all you do is once you're happy with that image, you can just save the image and call it star trails i'll call it second try so again that's me star trails and i can save that image the good thing about this program is pretty smart that you can actually do time lapses as well slightly over the slightly bit over the topic but it's just something to show you guys and girls what you can do and you can set your time exposure you can set my, you can set your time lapse and now we're just going to do a basic setting and this will give me uh, a time lapse okay you can set your frames per second like so and you set as much as you want and then when you click OK and what that does is it will do a time-lapse video of your night sky so that's processing the time-lapse video let that go off right you've created it so what we're good at is uh, minimize that And we go into our time lapse. And as you can see here, it's a, it's a few it's only a few frames, but it's a short video. But I'll put it on I'll put it on recycle. And as you can see here with the time lapse. You can just see how easy it is to do a time lapse video. Uh, it's pretty awesome, really. But more frames you can capture, the more you can get these stunning images. So, think about this program, you can do a time lapse video. So, that includes my video. On, sh on showing you how to do star trailing and some basic time lapse videos. I hope this video has helped you uh, massively. Please feel free to comment this video and please post these great images of the star trailing. Now, this is just my first attempt, and unbelievably, it was very successful. I just couldn't believe I could get a stunning image through uh, my basic setup. So again, please feel free to try this star trailing. It is a must. And some of the images that you can get are absolutely unbelievable. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. And clear skies to you all.